Okay, here we are inside of 3ds Max. Let's go ahead and get started by setting up some reference materials. I'm just going to draw a simple plane and open up the material editor. You can see I've already set up um, a basic material. All I have in here is a bitmap image inside of the diffuse slot. Now inside the bitmap we're going to click on view image and take a look at these values up here, width and height. Uh, click the UV button and it'll switch to X and Y. So we can see this is 1200 by 1200 pixel image. Uh, this is helpful because we're going to make our plane a square to match our reference image. I'll make it a one foot by one foot plane. And I'll just drop the material on there. Click the show map button. Now this isn't exactly the right size. Um, I'm going to draw a rectangle just for reference. And I'm going to make it eight and a quarter inches tall because that's how tall I want this fork to be when I'm finished with it. Drop it down below so I can see my reference rectangle. And I'm just going to scale that until it comes close to matching the size I'm looking for. And that's good enough. Now that we have it the right size, I'm going to draw in a couple more lines just for my own reference. Kind of mark some of the important limits on the model. At the bottom right here appears to be the top of the bridge of the handle. I'll mark the bottom of the prongs and the top of the prongs. That should be good enough. Maybe I'll drag one more to the top of the handle area. These are just for reference, they're not super critical. Now, I want to simplify this a little bit so I don't have the other four images that we're not going to be modeling right now. And I'm going to convert this to a editable poly. I brought up this menu by right clicking on my viewport. Now we have an editable poly object and I'm going to go to the vertex sub object level, select the vertices I want to move, make sure that the preserve UVs button is checked. And what that'll do is let us move this in without distorting our map. If you don't have that checked, you'll notice if you have that unchecked, you'll notice that it moves your whole map as you move it in and out. So we'll check that and just isolate that one fork just to make things a little more simple. Now I'm going to start by drawing one more reference line, and we'll actually use this to start our model. I'm going to draw a line that coordinates with these reference lines we've already drawn. And I'm going to make them Bezier points, right-clicking again. When you have a vertice selected, it will automatically bring up this menu right here. And you can pick between the different vertice options. Let's make these a Bezier. And I'm going to move these around a little bit to kind of get the general shape or profile of the fork. Uh, in the negative direction, we'll make this a negative 0.75 inches, three quarters of an inch to the top of the prongs if it's sitting level on a table right here to the top of the prongs. And again to the handle. You know what, I'm actually going to delete this one. We just need that one right there and make that a half an inch, negative 0.5 inches. And you can already see how we're getting the vague shape of a fork in profile already. A little bit of simplifying and we'll get it really close. The bottom of the fork, maybe I'll move that reference line. A better spot for it would be to mark the bottom of the fork where it actually will rest on a tabletop surface. And we'll move that that general area. 
maybe a little lower. And I'm going to reset the tangents here, spread that out just a little bit. Pull this one up in the y direction, give it a little more arc. that down just a hair. Seems a little little high. Fine tune this however you feel. You know, and I actually like the way this is looking right now. So there we have it. We've set up our reference materials. Now in the next video we're going to go ahead and get this modeled.